The instructions made it sound like this would be difficult. This was easy. I must be doing something wrong. So the majority of the work here is creating and modifying some piano hinge that will be riveted to the seat bottom uh, and that will allow for three points of adjustment for the seat back uh, for varying heights of pilots. I've got some piano hinge pulled out. I also pulled out some scrap because I think I might be able to make it a little way with some scrap and I want to save as much of this as I can because I think it's hard to come by right now. Uh, I'm going to get these pieces measured out per the plans and see if we can start chopping them up and looking at where they get riveted and lay out those holes as well. Now it's time to drill the hinge halves to the seat bottom, then they will become the seat brackets. Uh, now I've numbered them one, two, and three, right and left. The reason is I'm a shoddy craftsman, and uh, because these were drilled by me and not a CNC, uh, these holes, no matter how hard I try, are going to wind up just slightly different and they will not be able to be swapped around once I match drill them to the seat bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of double-sided tape to keep the initial holes there before we keep some Clecos in, and I'm going to punch these holes. So come on, show me home and I will go. So come on, show me home and I will go. So come on, show me home and I will go. The thing about time lapse is that inevitably you'll forget to turn it off at some point. Here you're going to see me dimpling the seat pans. Uh, this will allow for the installation of nut plates which will later attach tunnel covers. I'm doing a similar thing to the flap covers, again dimpling those skins, prepping them for prime, and we will later be installing nut plates for those that will actually attach those pieces to both the side ribs of the baggage compartment and the baggage floor. I'm getting 
I would be lying <clears throat> if I said I wasn't nervous after what happened last time I went priming. Fingers crossed this works better. All right, I got my parts out of the booth. Uh, I put a heater in there overnight and it seems to have helped them cure a little bit. They're probably still a little delicate, but I can certainly work with them. I am really happy with the coverage. Uh, the face looks nice and white. The backside, uh, a light coat, just enough to, to protect it from corrosion. Um, it, it looks great. From here, I need to start adding nut plates, adding the seat brackets, and then we can get it riveted into the plane. I went ahead and fit the right hand forward baggage wall on just out of curiosity and it fit really good. The last final hole needed a little bit of adjustment but I just kind of filed it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to fit the other one because these are going to have to come back off when we go to put the flap linkage on. So there's really no point in it. That was just purely for my satisfaction. From here I need to put the seat floors on but before we do that we need to rivet in those hinges we made. So again, these hinges offer three places for the seat to go for three different heights uh, of the pilot and the passenger. Mine will likely be on the middle, but I'm installing all three to give myself some options. They get installed with a staggering amount of number four rivets, and I think I'm going to try a bit of a back riveting technique. We'll see how that pans out. Um, before you ask the question, I'll answer it. Why aren't they primed? Well. I like the look of them unprimed. I don't anticipate the uh, higher risk of corrosion here with it being lifted up off the floor in the cockpit. I was concerned that the primer would affect the ability for the other half of the hinge to fit and to successfully get some pins in there. So I'm going unprimed on these. We'll see if I regret it later. Two of the ribs have been cut so we can get the control sticks in and out of the plane and it allows for way too much movement as I'm trying to install these seat floors. So I'd like to join those and I have that part that we bolt in place to join those up but I really don't want to install it and then later have to remove it to put the control sticks in. So I'm just going to install the control sticks. Now if all this sounds like a thinly veiled excuse to put some control sticks in my plane, well you kind of nailed it.
that's about all we're gonna show of that. Actually, you know what, wait. This entire blob of footage here, this is about three hours of me swearing at my plane trying to get this thing in. The washers are impossible to get in place, and I'm really, I, I just, I hope to God I don't have to take this thing out and put it back in again. And that's about all we're gonna show of that. Well, that was a good way to kill a couple hours, and I'm not even confident that all this can stay in. I, I may have to remove it, but I got my head stuck on it and I just couldn't let it go. It is in there for now. Uh, the, the actual control stick, largely just in, for entertainment value at this point, it really serves no purpose. It will just get in the way. So I will go ahead and remove that. The bracket is in, again, hopefully for good, not quite sure. Um, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and look at getting this first seat floor in and see how it looks. The front seat floors are very much like the baggage floors. Uh, they go in, we will blind rivet them to most of the seat ribs, and then where there's a access tunnel running through the middle, it will share some nut plates with the rib itself, and we will rivet those in by squeezing along the way, and then we'll move on to the other half. seat floors they screw in place realistically all we have to do is make sure they fit so I'm going to add all the screws from there if I'm happy that no further adjustment is necessary I'll pull them out we'll add a couple nut plates but not many and then they get deburred and primed a relatively simple part but I might as well get it out of the way now
Now there's another aspect of this we're going to tackle at the same time and there's a bit of a center tunnel cover that will function as a little bit of an armrest just in front of the flap mechanism between these two seats. I'm excited because we get to get back into fabrication mode as a lot of these pieces are just made from uh, sheet and bar stock. Let's take a look at what that takes. So next up, I got to put a small bend in the top of this piece. Out comes the world's trustiest bending brake to help us out. All right, couple more holes in the top, some match drill holes in the bottom. We'll call this one done. It'll get primed with these pieces and then everything can get screwed in place, of course, when the time comes. I want to thank everybody for joining me, for sending such nice comments my way. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd suggest you do. Next week, we'll be seeing if we can get these pieces bolted down, possibly getting some seat backs in the airplane uh, and certainly getting some pieces primed and in place. I will see you then next time on Ryan Flies.